ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Please start making your way to your seats. Our keynote presentation will begin in just a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Presentation will begin shortly. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and aloha. Welcome to the Defense Information Systems Agency keynote presentation provided by Lieutenant General Robert Skinner. Lieutenant General Robert J. Skinner is the Director of Defense Information Systems Agency and Commander of the Joint Forces Headquarters Department of Defense Information Network. As Director of the Defense Information Systems Agency, Lieutenant General Skinner manages a global network and leads nearly 19,000 service members, civilians and contractors who plan, develop, deliver, and operate joint interoperability command and control capabilities and defend the enterprise infrastructure in more than 42 countries. As commander of the Joint Force Headquarters Department of Defense Information Network, he is in charge with leading unified action across the DOD to secure, operate, and defend the Doden. He leads an establishment of Doden priorities and directs threat informed actions throughout formal planning and future operation initiatives, as well as the command and control of daily unified network operations, cybersecurity actions, and defense operations on the Doden. Lieutenant General Skinner was commissioned through officer training school in 1989. He has served in various tactical and fixed communications assignments, and that's it. <laughs> If you have any questions for the general, please text those to the address located on the screen. They will be provided to him for answering. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm welcome for this morning's guest speaker, the Director of Defense Information Systems Agency and the Joint Force Headquarters Department of Defense Information Network, Lieutenant General Robert Skinner. Good job. Video. 30 minute video.
Okay, I think a lot of you have seen that, or some of you have seen that, and I know there's, there's a shelf life for videos, um, and this is the last of this video, because TechNet Cyber, we're gonna have a, a different one. And, but the reason I, I keep showing this, if you don't get excited about what's on that video, then I need to come check your pulse. <laughs> because I think this is at the heart of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's really, it's about the war fighters, it's about our mission partners, and it's about making sure that they are agile and flexible and able to do what our nation calls upon each and every day. So that's why I show it every day. But I will tell you, it is exciting to be back here in, in Hawaii. I still don't understand why the DOD CIO and Joe Nakasone won't, uh, won't allow me to change our headquarters from Fort Meade to Hawaii. Um, every time I ask, they just shake their head and say, and then next question or, or next topic. Um, but I'm still trying, so I got two more years to to do this. Now, Colonel Simmons doesn't want that, for sure, because he doesn't want the, the director, but I, I keep telling him, keep your seat warm. Or actually, it should be keep my seat warm uh, until I can get here. So it's, it's great to be back. It's, it's great to be here with, with some friends. The other part about all this, and General Brown and I were talking a, a, a little bit before, and she goes, and I asked her, I says, what should I talk about today? Uh, it's like two minutes before the, <laughs> before the session. She goes, tell them how awesome I am. She goes, you can never go wrong with that. Um, so I will. Um, General Brown's awesome. So, and, and, and I will tell you, having been here a little over a, a year ago, what she and the Indo-PACOM team have done over the last year is just amazing. Um, and I know Colonel Simmons uh, and team are, are helping out, but what, what she's been able to do to take the things that we talked about a year ago to a significantly higher level. So I was running this morning um, looking at the beach and again thinking, man, why can't I just have my headquarters here? Um, th think about what to talk about today, right? And what caught my attention as I was running is I'm here in the Pacific uh, and some of our team is here in the Pacific and we have a conflict going on in Europe, right? And I have a DISA Europe team that is there, they're supporting them. But the reason that I'm here and the reason I made sure that we were able to get here is because from a JFHQ Doden and or a DISA standpoint, we can't just focus on one theater, right? We have a set the globe aspect. And I will still tell you, no matter what is happening in, in Europe, and yes, there's atrocities, and we want to get this into a better state sooner rather than later, China's still the pacing threat. And the Pacific is still the strategic area of I'll say interest, and the strategic area period for the world order over the next 10, 20, 30 years. That's why we're here, is to show that we are emphasizing from a dis and JFHQ Doden standpoint, everything that is going on here, and we are here to sh continue to show our support for what General Brown is trying to do, what Admiral Aquilino is trying to do. I had meetings yesterday with the component commanders, um, and every single one of them identified the communications infrastructure. They identified the security of our cyber domain as key what they are trying to do. I'll also tell you, I'm bringing word from the building, the Pentagon that is, that our OSD leadership also understanding of the challenges in cybersecurity and hardening and what that does in support of operational maneuver that I would say at any time that, that we've had. And it's not just an, in, an individual, right? Because we've had some great individuals in, in leadership positions who, who no one understood it. But this is across the board. Just as important is they're willing to put resources behind it. Because a strategy without resources is just a pipe dream, as, as everybody knows. Um, now, proof's in the pudding uh, as we go and, and we look at fiscal year 24, fiscal year 25. But there is a push to really get after how do we secure our warfighting networks better? How do we make sure that we have the right connectivity no matter where we operate from, right? Whether it is a, from a base post camp or station, whether it's from a tactical arena um, and anything in between. So that's the good news that, that we're also bringing from, from the uh, Pentagon. So now I was thinking, okay, so, so what do we really talk about? I will tell you there is no discussion from a DISA standpoint, and happy to talk about JFHQ Doden, 
uh, but this is more kind of a, a um, that, that you have. It all boils down to, the, from an agency standpoint, then prioritizing command and control. Think about the tyranny of distance that, you, that everyone here sees each and every day. Command and control is even more important. I had a discussion with Admiral Paparo yesterday, and he talked about decision superiority, or he said he talked about that here um, with the team. In order to have decision superiority, you've got to have the right command and control. And oh, by the way, it's got to be modernized. If you think of, as Admiral Richards talks about modernization of the NC3 uh, architecture and the NC3 systems, well, what's at the heart of that? Communication systems. If we don't do the communication systems as you're doing the platforms, then we're not going to be successful. So that's why command and control is very important. I think, as everyone knows, we have the White House Communications Agency, we have SECDEF Communications um, that help provide the necessary support for our senior leaders to be able to talk at any one time. And it's never more important than today as we go through this crisis because those systems are being pummeled. Three to four to five to six times the average um, usage is occurring today. And those systems are pretty old. Uh, so we are going through a, a complete modernization effort of all those systems. Um, IP enablement with our red switch network. Our crisis management system, we're, we're going through major upgrades. And that's to ensure that our, whether it's the president, Secretary of Defense, our combatant commands, because I'll tell you if, you, if you don't think the combatant commands aren't using red switch, they are significantly, to the fielded forces and, and back. And how do we make sure that the command and control is available for the fielded forces and those who are in a DDL environment? Right, that's what command and uh, control is about. So that's our number one priority that will continue to be the number one priority because you can't get decision superiority without that. The second area is really, really gets at the heart of how do we innovate to get to readiness? Where I would say I, we really need help from an industry standpoint is how do I get to the future faster while also making sure what I have is available, resilient, and that we've optimized it. I don't need point solutions. I don't need another tool. And the, those who've heard me talk for the last 10 years have heard me say, I don't need more tools. I need capability, but more importantly, I need to know how to better leverage what you've already sold me. And where can we divest? As, as I think, as, as industry has seen, we're not shy about divesting things. Um, as we talk about DEE, as we talk about Mill Cloud 2, as we talk about GVS, which we, we are sunsetting, we are sunsetting those things that do not provide best value. I need your help to identify where else we have capabilities that aren't best value that we can sunset, because there's no way to get to the future faster without sunsetting the things that we already have that are legacy and that are taking an enormous amount of resources um, that could otherwise be used for the future. Whoever was playing that joke and want me to rap is wrong. Was, <laughs> I have zero rhythm. But from an automation standpoint, right, we got these terms robotic process automation, right, uh, and we are fully leveraging that to really get at how do we commoditize those things that we can and we need to to put our folks and the carbon that we always talk about and the mind against the harder problem sets. That's where we can use your help from an industry standpoint, is where can we also leverage automation to streamline those things that are normal? Um, I had a interview with um, Defense Breaking News probably a couple weeks ago. And one thing I highlighted was, we're really trying to turn the organization to be more software focused than hardware focused. That doesn't mean that we're getting away from the circuits. It doesn't mean that we're getting away from the hardware. But I will tell you, in order to be agile, especially to keep pace and to be faster than what the Chinese are doing, um, 
we've got to make sure that we leverage software to the maximum ex extent possible. Um, and so where we can even from a circuit and, and enabling greater capacity, greater bandwidth, that's what we need to help because software is the way to do that. Otherwise, we, will, we go into the, what we're doing today when it comes to TDM, right? We have so much TDM still within our, our inventory and moving from TDM to IP based, it's like you're moving a mountain. Um, we're trying to get, to get rid of it because then we can upgrade a lot faster. I mean, this is like a five year project and it takes resources and you just can't get there fast enough. But through software we can. And so that's why we're really trying to, in order to increase readiness, we've got to understand and better leverage the digital world and the software world when it comes to these things. And, and, and we can talk about that in, in the question area. Leveraging data as a center of gravity. That also gets to software, right? Uh, but I, I will tell you, I don't need more data. The things that industry has provided from a tools capability, I got so much data we don't know what to do with. Um, we need the right data. Helping us understand what the right data is and be able to exploit that is important, especially from a defensive standpoint. Because we got thousands, if not millions of endpoints, and, and we'll talk about endpoints in a minute, um, that all that data, we got routers, we got switches, we got hubs, we got you, you name it. Uh, we got so much data out there, but I need help in how do we streamline that data to really tell us proactively what's going on within our networks, what's going on within our circuits, what's going on within our cloud instantiations. That's where we need help. Uh, won't talk about JWCC, although I, I will tell you that, you know, contract awards will be in the December timeframe. Um, but we are really looking at how do we leverage public-private partnerships? How do we leverage hybrid clouds? How do we leverage on-prem, off-prem? How do we leverage CONUS, O-CONUS? Um, that's what we're going through when we talk about leverage data as a center of gravity. Because I can guarantee we do not have the data centers in the right places, and this is commercial and this is government, in the right places for a potential future fight. Helping us understand where you have capacity and capability, where we have capacity and capability, where's the partnerships, all goes into this leveraging data as a center of gravity. Okay, the soul crusher, right? And those who heard me talk at the uh, Colorado uh, Symposium, uh, uh, Rocky Mountain, sorry, Vanessa, Rocky Mountain Symposium, Know, know that this harmonizing of cybersecurity and user experience is at the heart of what we are trying to do, okay? Anybody who logs in and in many systems, I mean, you can go get a cup of coffee, you can go, it's just, it, it's a soul crusher uh, every morning. Um, how do you, how do we get better at our endpoints? How do we get better from understanding how the routing is occurring? How do we understand all the different uh, uh, appliances? Um, you know, we got Thunderdome coming to a theater n near you, which is a new way of looking at um, our defensive posture. It's, it's a new way of looking at how we're gonna be routing uh, in the future, because it's not just an endpoint, right? Your performance is based on your bandwidth. It's based on the number of hops it's taken, the number of appliances that it has to go through at the, at the multiple levels, and then the number of things that you have on your, on your endpoints, and then, Every now and then we'll decide to run a scan in the middle of the day that takes up 98% of your processing. Um, so we like to do blue on blue every now and then too. But how can we better align the user experience while also making sure that we are hardened uh, in the right way? Uh, because we can't be owned at the, at, the, at the behest of a user experience. And then the final piece is how do we empower the workforce? A lot of times we talk about education, training, but there's a litany of things that we can do to empower the, the workforce. And some of it is, is just making things less complex, 
right? How do we make things less complex? How do we make the tools and the capabilities less complex so that an airman, a soldier, sailor, marine, guardian, they don't have to have a PhD in information technology to make it work and to make it work effectively and to optimize that capability. How do we get rid of, and you'll hear me say this often, and, and uh, institutional silliness, right? What are the policies, procedures, guidelines that are out there that just drive people crazy, that don't allow us to be optimized, that don't allow us to be effective at the end of the day? As General Brown in this theater is driving change, whether it's the mission data platform, right, where it, whether it's the multi, dis, um, whatever the new term for IndoPacNet is. Multi-domain delivery. Multi delivery. Um, all these initiatives, how do we make them less complex for not just the user, but those who are operating, maintaining, and securing? That's what we want to get after. And so optimizing the workforce, it's less about the education and the training, although that's important, the professional development of our, of our teams. It's more about what are the organizational design aspects that are just crushing their ability to be effective. So those are kind of the five line of efforts, five priorities. You also hear me say licensing. And every time I speak, I will talk licensing. We've got to do a better job as a department and working with industry on licensing. I should not stand and go talk to my counterparts in the Navy or in the Air Force and there's better pricing for them on products than we have from a DOD standpoint or for a 4 and I know it's based on account managers, um, but we really, to be a best value, we're not saying industry can't make money. What we're saying is it's gotta be best value um, from a department standpoint too. And so I need your help um, as we kind of look through licensing. The other part I'll, I'll ask you is help us help ourselves, right? Just selling us something doesn't necessarily help us. From a licensing standpoint, if we decide to put something in our agreement that says, for example, that we want to true up every month, and you know darn well that we can't true up every month. We don't have the processes in place. Um, help us help ourselves. Now, I think we're in a better spot. Um, we, we talk about this a lot, but I will, for the next two years, I'm going to be talking about licensing um, and talking about best value when it comes to capabilities. Okay, I'm getting the five-minute warning um, on, up here, so I'll stop talking. I could talk a lot more, but I really want to hear your questions. Actually, Colonel Simmons wants to hear your questions so that he can answer them. So, any questions? Thank you, sir. The first question, what is the plan to alter or change policies that inhibit existing technologies from being implemented that would otherwise fill some of the gaps facing the Pacific AO, specifically policies that cross AO boundaries? Colonel Simmons? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a pass. Um, so I'll tell you, um, here's what I would, whoever asked the question, what policy are you talking about, right? Help give us examples of those things that are not allowing cross-cutting. Because I, I will tell you today, with, the new, with uh, Mr. Sherman as a DOD CIO and the other CIOs, there is a great relationship to get after anything that's inhibiting uh, the ability to um, enable and engage and improve what we are doing, even from a policy standpoint. So if there are policies out there that you know of that aren't enabling us to go cross theaters, um, because again, we have a global mission and, and, and we can figure that out. So that, that's why I'll, I'll turn the question back to you to go help me understand what those policies are and then and we can get after them. Thank you, sir. Next question. How can you make the data available for developing AI solutions to address capability gaps against threats and policies regarding Title 10 and 50 issues? Yeah. General Brown? 
No. Um, so, so here's what I would say. In a crawl, walk, run, right, I'd say we're at the crawl stage even within Title 10. Um, so the focus really is Title 10 now um, and then bring in the Title 50 because there's some legal aspects of this um, that aren't necessarily policy, but it's, but it's more legal. Um, and so until, the, until we're able to get that. With that said, I think we have, a, we have congressional staffers who are really getting at the how do we make this better. Don't have a good answer of when that will be, but I think you'll see over the next year or two, you'll see more efforts in trying to bring this stuff together um, while still maintaining the, the legality part of it. Thank you. I think we have time for one more. <clears throat> what is the biggest gap in being able to successfully defend networks in support of the warfighter? Knowing. With that quick answer, I think we have time for one more. <laughs> okay, well, we'll take this, but, but just to, to add a little bit to that other one. It's all about knowing, right? The deal, the, the Doden, I'll say, has 300 million IP, IPv4 address space. That's a lot. And it's, I call it a federated republic, right? Because you have a whole bunch of different organizations who have a different piece of that pie that JFHQ Doden is really in charge of bringing all that together. And if General Fredenberg would have taken care of it when he was a deputy, we'd be okay. No. Um, but I'll tell you, it's knowing, and it's not knowing manually, it's knowing automated, right? Because we set up the command centric operational framework under General Fredenberg to really parse this Doden out into 45 different areas of operation. It's still a lot of manual part of that. And so leveraging automation to make that less manual is really how we get after that. Uh, but you got to know first um, in order to know where you have the problems. And so sensing, having the right uh, instrumentation, and bringing that to bear is, is important. That's what I would say is the biggest gap. Okay, we'll wrap up with this one. What is the best forum or channel to provide sunset recommendations or opportunities for DISA to divest? Send Chief Clink an email. <laughs> no, uh, so we have a mission partner engagement office. Uh, we also have corporate connections. Um, and so those are two kind of the, of the biggest ways to get it in. And I'm happy to share, I don't know what the emails are, um, but I'm happy to, to, to share those um, with the team here to, to make sure you have it. But th those are the best ways to, to get it in. Okay, team, thank you. Hope everybody has a great day. Can stay here for a General, thank you. Hey, my name's Ed Riglowitz, the Regional Vice President of FC International, retired Air Force IT guy. So, uh, and really looked, was really looking forward to your uh, your presentation today. All I can say is we are excited, and it is hurting my hair what you just told us all. So, but on behalf of FC International and the FC Hawaii chapter. I'd like to present a challenge coin to you and thank you very much for your wonderful words. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. We'll be taking a five minute break to reset the head panel area. So uh, we'll be five minutes, a quick five minutes, folks. Thank you. <laughs>